bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Obama, Hillary, and John McCain, they've all become household names, but what about the folks that could become their picks for vice president? Not quite as well known. They could be soon. Hi, I'm Janelle Wolf, and you're watching Comcast Newsmakers. Joining me now is Democratic strategist, CNA political analyst, Steve Askew. Been with us about eight years now, contributing to various programs, and we appreciate mm -hmm. you coming back on today. Thank you, Janelle. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about uh, the short list, I guess, of folks that are being considered for this mm -hmm. very prestigious role. Mm -hmm. Who are your picks? Well, I think it depends. If uh, Barack Obama is the nominee of the party after the August convention, all the, <laughs> the dust settles, um, he's going to have uh, very little choice but to pick a couple people. I think Florida is going to come into play because of the status of that important state uh, in the fall election. Uh, Senator Bill Nelson uh, will be uh, one of the, one of the uh, folks on the short list. I also think that um, Ken Salazar of Colorado will be someone that Hillary Clinton will look to uh, to try to shore up the, uh, the Latino vote nationally. Uh, Bill Richardson, the governor of New Mexico, another important pick, someone who just recently got out of the sure. race for president. Uh, and I think Wesley Clark, the, uh, the retired general uh, who's a leader in national security issues, uh, and a contributor to a lot of TV programs, will also be someone to be uh, considered. He's a Hillary supporter right now, but Barack Obama might need him as well to try to uh, deal with some of the credential issues on national security issues. Now, earlier you said something along the lines about Obama being limited as to who his picks are. Correct. You know, the man might be the candidate for president. Why is he limited? Well, he's limited because, in you look at Florida, I mean, this is a state that was not really in play because of the rules of the Democratic National Committee. Uh, even though Hillary won it um, in, in that race, he didn't campaign there. And because of the delegate selection process and seeing those delegates in the, in the August convention, um, he's going to need to try to deal with uh, Florida. Florida is so important to win in the fall that uh, and right now looking at his numbers where he's having the roughest time throughout the states that he's won so far and the ones that he's lost, Texas and Ohio, for example, uh, is blue-collar voters and even Jewish voters. And that's an important voting block in Florida. I think if the election were held today in Florida, he would probably get 60% of those voters. He needs to get 80%. So that's why he needs to pick someone from Florida, I think, uh, to try to shore this thing up if he's a nominee. Now, the rumor mill has been swirling for some time now about the possible dream team ticket of Hillary and Obama, mm. or Obama and Hillary. How realistic is that not, uh, happening? Not going to happen. No. Not in this lifetime. Just in our minds. Uh, two very strong personalities, two people who firmly believe that they're in the lead for various reasons. Stubborn. Um, yeah, very stubborn. But I don't think that's the issue so much as it is that they need to um, uh, appeal to various bases in the party. I mean, you look at Hillary Clinton's base, it's been blue collar, it's been Reagan Democrats, um, elderly voters, uh, non-baby boomer elderly. Women. So, and women. Uh, but Barack Obama's made some inroads in some of those areas, and he needs to gain uh, in, attraction with a vice presidential pick, I think, with someone with national security credentials, uh, someone who can appeal to Jewish voters, someone who can win in some of these larger states that Hillary has won, and Latino voters. So there's a, it, it's, a, it's an interesting mishmash of, of prospects. Uh, there are other names out there. Senator Evan Bayh of Indiana, for example, is always a favorite of insiders. Uh, but I think uh, Kathleen Sebelius, the governor of uh, Kansas, but, uh, you know, in the end, they're going to have to do what they need to win the election. And I think that that's why you're going to see states like Florida um, and, and New Mexico, the Southwest, are going to come into play. In your past experience, does the vice presidential candidate make a difference to voters at all? Um, it depends. Uh, it really does depend. I mean, you look at what George W. Bush did with Dick Cheney. He picked someone who was an experienced hand, who was a Washington insider, to, to help him uh, steer the ship. Uh, to deal with some of the issues he had with lack of experience in Washington. Uh, but, uh, you know, it depends. Al Gore was a great compliment to, to Bill Clinton. Um, but in the end, uh, two Southern guys, I mean, was that going to make or break the election? Not necessarily. But I think in this case, because of the deep divisions in the primary, it's going to come into play. I think it will play probably more of a role than it has in the past. How about the idea of Clinton and Clinton? Uh, not possible, no. but uh, <laughs> wishful thinking, I think, on the part of Bill Clinton, perhaps, to come back, but uh, I don't see that happening just yet. No. Nope. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good to see you again. Appreciate it. And I'm Janelle Wolf. Thanks for tuning in to Comcast Newsmakers with Democratic strategist and CNA political analyst Steve Askew. For more news and information, make sure you visit our website, cna.tv, or catch us again right here on CNN Headline News.